All right, guys, this is part three of your PowerPoint certification review. And for this one, you're going to need to open this uh, file called Coffee House Project. And uh, just like the other ones, please make sure that you're downloading this thing. <clears throat> Don't try to work in Office 365. All right. Download this so that we can be working on the desktop application version of the Coffee House Project. All right. And it starts out pretty simple. On slide three, move the mint chocolate shape to the front. All right. So you can see here I have a mint chocolate shape. I'm just going to right click on it and uh, say bring to front. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then say bring to front. Just like that. All right. Um, number 19 says set the transition effect from left for all slides. So we already have a transition on here somewhere. It's the push transition. They just want us to set the options to go from left and then hit apply to all. Okay. Number 20 on slide one, apply the word art style, fill white outline, orange accent color to hard shadow, orange accent color to, to the text Himalayan coffee house. All right. So word art is one of those things that they just need to really kind of, um, Shorten the names of them. Call them something. I don't know, but it's gotten to be ridiculous. Okay, so click on your Himalayan coffee house. Click on the border around the text box so that your dotted line becomes a solid line. That way you know everything in here has been selected. We're going to go to the drawing tools format tab. And under drawing tools format, you should see word art styles. What they want is, I think it's this one. Let me just make sure. Fill white, outline orange, accent two, hard shadow orange, accent. That's it. Okay. That's it. <clears throat> so, the only thing with word art, just like everything else, there's no names under them, so you have to hover. And on a time test, that makes me very nervous. All right. Move the try our new flavors slide between the title and the menu slide. All right. So, here's try our new flavors. We're just going to literally click and drag it up. That's it. That's the whole question. Um, insert a slide footer that displays the slide number and the word draft. Apply the footer to all slides except the title slide. So we're going to go to the insert tab. We're going to go to header footer and we're going to put a check where it says footer. We're also going to put a check where it says don't show on title slide. It says it wants us and the word draft. So we're going to type in draft. Is that it? Insert a slide for that displays the slide number and the word draft. So we need slide number checked. Apply the footer to all slides except the title slide. So don't show on title slide. Apply to all. Okay. And then there's our little footer right there. And it should not be up here. It should not be on our title slide. Good. All right. Um, on slide two, crop the image. Or that should say on slide three. I'm sorry. That's a mistake. Number 23 should say on slide three. On slide three. Crop the image so that the right edge aligns with the left edge of the slide at five. All right, so here's our image right here. What we're going to do is we're going to right click on this image and we're going to go to format picture. We're going to go over here to picture and we're going to go to crop. All right, and you're going to see crop position and picture position. Under the crop position, on the left, it says type in five, all right? Or we might be able to just hit the arrows down to five, just like that. And that's it, all right? Close that out when you're done. <laughs> on slide four, in the content placeholder, oh, this is another 3D object right here. Yeah, 3D model. I think we actually do something with this one this time. On slide four, insert a content placeholder. In the content placeholder, create a line with markers chart. Okay, so it wants us to insert a chart right here. And this line with markers chart, we're going to go over here and we're going to say line. And it's this one right here, line with markers chart. So normally when you insert a chart <clears throat> on the slide, it's going to have a table uh, with some data on it. Um, and on the test, they're just going to want you to copy and paste that data into this um, Excel spreadsheet that pops up and that's it. And then you're just going to have to close it out. All right. I don't have any data for you to copy and paste in here. Um, but I want to say the data 
only has two columns in it. So here's the trick to this question. When you copy and paste the data in there, you're still going to have series two and three chilling in here. So just take the little blue bounding box and take it over like that so that you're only showing the data um, that you paste in there. All right, so make sure you use this bounding box to only show the data that you paste in that box. All right, all right, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is for right now. I've seen so many different versions of this question that I just kind of left it like this on the test review, but I've seen them have like a little table right here with some info that you literally just copy and paste into that Excel spreadsheet, and that's it. All right, all right, <clears throat> on slide four, which is what we're on, change the view of the 3D model to above front right. Resize the model to a height of 4.5. So just like everything else, when you click on it, you're going to get a contextual tab up here that says 3D model tools, and we're going to say format tab. And then right here, you're going to see 3D model views. So click the drop down there, and we're going to try to find above front right. Above right. Above back left above back right, above back, above front right. Boom, just like that. In the size group, type 4.5 for the height. So see the height up here? We're actually going to type in 4.5. Just like that. It looks terrible, but leave it like that. Don't touch it. All right, <clears throat> apply the rotate slide transition with the from left effect option to all slides. All right, so right now, under transitions, we have this push transition uh, that we applied to all. They want us to go ahead and use the rotate transition this time. We're gonna change it up. Rotate, which is this one right here. It's under dynamic content. We're gonna rotate from left. And we're gonna apply it to all, all right? All right, and that's everything for part three. That brings us through question number 26, um, which we're almost halfway done with it, not quite. So um, this is going to be part three. We're going to pick it up with part four uh, here in just a minute.